If you lost your cell phone anywhere near New York City, it might be at the largest lost and found in the U.S. That is located in the largest train station in the world and the second most visited destination in New York City, even if you don't arrive by train. This is All Request History. If you've ever wondered about the history of, well, anything, you're in the right place. Thanks this time to Robert J. of Bronx, New York, for requesting the history of Grand Central Station. Grand Central Terminal, better known as Grand Central Station, is a historic transportation hub located in Midtown Manhattan, New York City. The original depot was built in 1871 by the Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt. He was a successful investor and owned most railroads in the U.S., including the New York Central Railroad, so it was inevitable that he would build his own train station in Midtown Manhattan. The original depot was not the ornate, elaborate structure that stands today. It housed only four tracks and a train shed. The station operated coal-powered locomotives underground, so visibility was a constant problem. And with only manual communications, danger lurked around every bend. In 1902, an outbound train slammed into a stalled inbound train, killing 15 passengers and injuring 30 more. Public outcry for safety concerns forced the city to reevaluate the depot's design and capacity. Construction for the new terminal began in 1903 with the demolition of the old depot and under the guidance of the well-known architects Reed and Stem and Warren and Wetmore. With the tragedy of the terrible accident still in their minds, they implemented top modern technology for the time. With the creation of safer and more efficient electric trains, these architects had the foresight to think big, very big. The new terminal was the largest in the world upon its completion. Not only did it include a movie theater, a tennis court, an art gallery, a few museums, but it also included a vast electrical network to service the 44 platforms, the station, and all its facilities. It also included state-of-the-art safety communication systems and fireproofing. Reed, Stem, Warren, and Wetmore far exceeded the city's expectations. Its majestic design featured grand spaces, luxury, and its simplicity made it almost immediately a beloved landmark in New York City. February 2nd, 1913 is when the doors officially opened to the brand new Grand Central Terminal. Now, a station is a stop on a train line, and a terminal is where a train ends and begins, but we still call it Grand Central Station. The opening was celebrated in typical New York City style. There was music, entertainment, and of course, the obligatory political speeches by President Howard Taft and New York City Mayor William Gaynor. Not only was it the largest and busiest terminal in the world, but it also became a visitor destination. In 1967, Grand Central Terminal was designated a national landmark. For decades, commuters, shoppers, diners, history buffs, architect admirers, and photographers have come to Grand Central by the millions. According to Google, an average of 21.6 million visitors visit each year, not including those arriving by train. Over the decades of being that busy, by the time the 1970s came around, the terminal faced the threat of demolition. However, its national landmark designation and the passionate campaign led by former First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis succeeded in securing its preservation. It took decades for her involvement until the restoration was completed. It was really done in phases and didn't even start until the late 1980s. Restoration of the entire terminal continued through the 90s. Jackie Kennedy died in 1994, so she at least got to see the project started. The most significant and most noticeable restoration didn't take place until 1998, when the Grand Concourse was completed and restored to its former glory. The project, aimed not only at preserving the architectural and historical integrity of the building, but also at modernizing and improving its facilities. Everything in the facility, from ceilings to the floors, walls, chandeliers, the dining hall, the facilities, the shops, the foyers, and the windows were meticulously cleaned and completely restored. Improvements were made on the electrical, plumbing, HVAC systems, as well as enhancing accessibilities for commuters. 
Today, Grand Central Terminal is still a vital transportation hub, connecting the city with suburban areas and other major cities. It's home to the Metro North Railroad System. It primarily serves three commuter lines, Harlem, Hudson, and New Haven. All three lines service up to 30 stations each in the three states called the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, but it's host to visitors from all over the world. There are 90-minute tours offered almost daily for like 35 bucks. These fascinating tours will reveal some great insights and even a few Easter egg surprises. If you visit, here are some must-sees of Grand Central. First and most importantly, the clock. If you're meeting someone at Grand Central, you're going to meet them at the clock. Located at the very center of the terminal on top of the information booth, it's the most obvious and visible reference. It's been valued at $20 million. Another interesting feature about the info booth is the hidden private spiral staircase that descends to the lower information booth on the platform level below. Unfortunately, it's for employees only. Next, while you're at the clock, look up. Yeah, you know, lots of others are looking up around you too. The ceiling is very famous. It depicts the Mediterranean winter sky and its 2,500 lights as stars outline the paintings of the zodiac. Now, if you look all the way to the northwest corner at the crab or the cancer constellation, you're going to see a dark patch. That's a nicotine stain from years of cigarette smoke left intentionally during the restoration. Now look at the windows just next to that. You can't miss them, right? They're intended for lots of natural light and ventilation, but also those huge window panels are actually hallways to get from one side of the building to the other. If you look for a while, you might see someone walk through. In the 1930s, when CBS TV studios were at Grand Central, you could see Walter Cronkite running through there. The architects used an innovative design throughout the terminal by using ramps instead of stairs to make it easier on rushing commuters or busy shoppers. You can travel through that entire terminal up or down without using any stairs ever. Now at the bottom of the ramp before entering the dining concourse, you're going to see the famous oyster bar whispering ceiling. If you stand at the corner facing the wall, your friend will hear you whispering at the opposite corner. You have to try this. If you're feeling very adventurous, try to find the Campbell apartment on the Vanderbilt Avenue side. Campbell was a famous New York City broker that used this space as an office. It's not an apartment at all, but it is a very cool place to have a drink and learn more about its history. Some other fun facts. You want to look for acorns and leaves and a ton of spots throughout. Those are all part of the Vanderbilt coat of arms. Take a look at the Jackie Kennedy dedication portrait and plaque in the foyer of the 42nd Street entrance, celebrating her participation with the restoration project. As you walk around, pay attention to the numerous light bulbs in all those chandeliers. Not only will you not find one of those newfangled LED bulbs, but it's very unlikely you'll ever find one that's burnt out. Also, Grand Central is the second most visited site in New York City, second only to the Empire State Building. Grand Central has the largest lost and found in the United States. An average of 2,000 items are logged each month. They report that most of them are cell phones. Lastly, at the 42nd Street entrance, look at the amazing sculpture depicting the gods Minerva, Hercules, and Mercury around that very large clock. Now, if you wait there long enough, it may take days, you might see the number six. It's a door. It opens up and it allows service people to access that part of the roof. Now, when you visit the city, you'll probably see the Rockefeller Skaters, Times Square, the Empire State Building, and maybe even the 9-11 Memorial. But even if you don't take the train in, be sure to stop by and visit Grand Central Station. I mean, Grand Central Terminal. Ah, it's Grand Central Station. Well, thanks for checking in. Are you curious? Subscribe, leave your request in the comments, and the next video could be your history request.